At almost 95 years old, Jack Simpson isn't one to sit still. I have never learned how to retire. Three days a week, Deputy Simpson works as an investigator for the Newton County Sheriff's Department, where his involvement in the civil rights era serves as a living history for the deputies. Now, I think I have uh, some of the things that they might benefit from hearing about. It was Simpson's childhood dream to become an FBI agent. He was born in 1924, the same year J. Edgar Hoover was appointed the first director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. As a child, he was my hero along with the G-Man. His memories today, just as vivid as they were back then. In the 50s and 60s, I was assigned to the Atlanta Division of the FBI. In 1963, Simpson was part of a team accompanying U.S. Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach during the infamous stand in the schoolhouse door at the University of Alabama. And Katzenbach went there under orders from the President of the United States. I was among the agents that mingled in the crowd watching for violations of federal law. I stand here today as governor of this sovereign state then and governor and segregationist George Wallace tried to block the entry of two government. black students. The governor stood in the doorway with two state police officers accompanying him. Katzenbach stood in front of him with two U.S. Marshals. He made his little speech and he stepped aside peacefully and Vivian Malone and uh, James Hood integrated the uh, University of Alabama for the first time. Direct from our newsroom in Washington. Five years later, Simpson would be instrumental in collecting key evidence on James Earl Ray, the man convicted of killing Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. James Earl Ray had a 66 Mustang that he uh, drove around and followed Martin Luther King. And that car, after the murder, was subsequently found at a housing project in Atlanta. We took it to the uh, FBI office in Atlanta, tore it apart, searched uh, for fibers and hairs and dust and oh, fingerprints. But the case that may have left the biggest imprint was a murder of Lemuel Penn, a decorated veteran killed by the Ku Klux Klan outside Athens. They pulled up alongside the car, stuck two shotguns out the window, pulled the trigger, and hit Lemuel Penn in the throat and his head and killed him. Simpson was assigned to investigate Klansman James Lackey, who repeatedly denied any involvement until one day he fell ill. When I was interviewing him, I, I asked him, I said, James, I said, I think you're sick because you got something worrying you. It's eating on you. I said, why don't you tell us about it? And he said, well, I'll tell you about it. I got the confession. His work on the case is profiled in the book Murder at Broad River Bridge, which he helped write. We've been working all this time to replace hate with hope. And of course, we got work to do. I mean, it's not over. After 23 years with the FBI, Simpson went on to serve 20 years as bailiff for Rockdale County and has spent the last 18 years here in Newton County. Simpson says he tried retirement once, but missed the brotherhood of law enforcement too much. And I felt like I was part of a family. And when I had nothing but a rocking chair, I kind of lost my family. And now that I'm back, I'm happy. Simpson's list of accomplishments continues to grow. He writes a weekly column for the Rockdale Citizen and is also recognized in the National Law Enforcement Museum. I'm Gervier Denza for CBS 46 News.